Um, I would like to present for our group, our Pian Bank Floating School. And, uh, well, first we decided to uh, choose the place, Pian Bank, is because there, is a Viet there are Vietnamese refugees from taking over in 1971, taking over the rule. And they, they are not citizens, proper citizens of uh, Cambodia. They are just some <coughs> refugees, which they shouldn't be there, by, but they live there. And according to the Cambodian laws, they can't uh, have any crown there, they can't use any money there, so even if they have money, they can't use them, they can't buy anything. And then they can't own any area except water. So they start to have uh, villages on water, but since they are basically nobodies, they can't have uh, education. So, so that's why we decided to bring the school in this area. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, the Cambodia Kingdom, and uh, Cambodia Kingdom has the biggest lake in all, uh, all Indian Peninsula. And uh, uh, we choose uh, this village on Tom Lake because it's, uh, it's, it's the good example for all of it villages because it's flooded regularly so when we built the design we want it to be uh, repeatable for another villages. Okay. Yes. So uh, there is uh, some numbers about populations and so on. But the uh, main idea, our main idea was to uh, create a space for adults and for children when they can meet and uh, where they can share some knowledge. So the base idea of the, of the school is that in the morning they will have a proper uh, school for young children but in the evening whole school will change for some uh, community area where they can play and uh, where they can share, share the knowledge. Oh, the climate uh, from Cambodia divides like in uh, like uh, dry season and like rainy season and as you see here this is like the average uh, day that how much rain in the month. As you see here like next to it as well the average temperature you see it that here we start the decline of the temperature and you see that here start the rainy season that the rain will come more so it will decrease at the average temperature between this month and as you see here it like every hour it's really like different changes that are noticeable and as, you said, as well you see the wind directions and some even raining and like the that this is like because that's why like in the most highest water level in the rainy season because of the many rain. Yes. So there is our kind of sign plane because uh, it's in a part of the river. So the blue area is the water in the uh, most time of uh, the year, but when the when the floodings are coming and when the rain is coming, it's uh, the tunnel lake uh, gets bigger at least six times. So when uh, when the rain rains are, even this area with uh, the little wood, uh, water trees is flooded. So in, uh, we have the typical floor divided into two parts. The first part is uh, the, the classroom, which can be in the evening changed for the uh, community area, as I told you before. And it's also some kind of playing ground, because when the children are uh, still living on a, on a water, they can't actually play any games and so on, because they live on boats. 
And on the other part, there is uh, some bathroom. There are some bathroom and uh, kitchen. And uh, the the main idea of getting to school is by pontoon deck, which they can enter the boat and uh, get on the deck and to school. And uh, there is the uh, second floor where are another classrooms are for bigger children and uh, the living are uh, for teachers. That's the uh, second uh, uh, type of using the first floor for uh, young, younger children <laughs> education for uh, the class. Yes. And what about materials? We are using uh, mostly bamboo and some heavy food. Oh, heavy food. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, we use steel for the barrels and for the pontoons. And the energy part, we <coughs> use the graphite and liar, which is uh, functionable even if there is no sun. And the, the specific idea is to produce uh, as much energy as the out of the sunlight. So during the uh, cloudy weather and also rainy, and also the total, uh, uh, we use also the system of the grid connected with the uh, battery bank also, and uh, the connection is also supported on the roof, and uh, with the, the details, and also with the mechanical fasteners, and also we provide some batteries and uh, the average uh, as consumption of uh, what we designed for, what we estimate for the, this score is four solar panels and they produce uh, 35 kilowatts, uh, which is quite sufficient for the for the only school and also for the teachers who sleep in the school. Yeah. Um, so we want to take advantage of all the rainwater in the rainy rainy season, but so. Um, Said two, three hundred litre tanks will be enough to provide enough water. Yeah, during the rain, rainy season, so the water passes through this first flush diverter, which gets rid of the first ten minutes of like dirty water, and then so we have two tanks on each side so that to keep like weight distribution and the header pipe to keep the level the same in each tank, and then it supplies to there and the floor below as well. And during the week. Um, yeah, so this is um, the first 10 minutes of rainwater um, will like have all the dirt from the roof so this will fill up and then that could be emptied after the storm. And then also for during the dry seasons there's these ceramic water filters which are locally pr produced and so they can fill up with like water from the river or something and it'll clean it and they can drink from that. Um, and then the toilets are modelled off this toilet called the Handy Pod, which has been installed in other floating schools. But since our design was a bit different and our toilets are in the middle, um, we've had to move the digester. So that's going to be between the barrels underneath. And then there'll be a pipe that leads the wastewater to this floating plant lagoon, which cleans the water and releases it back into the river to hopefully make the river cleaner for them in the future. So after calculating uh, all of the cost, uh, it's possible to see that the most expensive materials are, for example, the, the, the water and energy systems. For example, the water, the water and and the solar panels, the floating pad lagoon, and all of, all of the stuff for the systems. So uh, there, there is a possibility, uh, possibility to, to change, to, um, to take it off, and, <coughs> and after that it would be cheaper. Uh, but also, uh, if we keep, keep it, uh, it, could be, it could be cheaper in the, in the long run. So it is a price, the total price uh, of our school um, and, the, and the materials. 
the, the, structure, the structural materials like timber and these kind of things are, are relatively cheap because they are uh, they are they are in the in this sound for example bamboo and these timbers are local timber and local materials So these are just an elevation of the school. This is the class which is provided for the student. And, and this is the bed for the teacher who is living there in the upper floor. And this is also another elevation. 